G'day and welcome back to RC Model Reviews. Today I'm going to take a look at what happens when soldering goes wrong. Um, I've done a couple of videos on how to solder and how to solder properly, the gear you need, the techniques and so forth, so uh, you can have a look for those, do a search. I'll if I remember I'll put links in the description of this video, but I probably won't, so you just have to go into my channel and search for soldering and you'll come up with those videos, well worth watching those. Uh, but I want to show you today because not everybody has watched those videos or not everyone has the right gear. Sometimes people give it a go and the results, they, they just don't work out too well and this is one of those occasions. Now this was dropped into me on the weekend. It's an example of what happens when people have good intentions but really get it wrong. And so what we've got here is a, a flight controller. It's one of those, uh, is it a Matek one? I'm not sure, but it is a flight controller. And uh, the guy that owns this obviously tried to solder some wires onto it, but it was a bit of an epic fail. What we're gonna do is take a closer look at what went wrong. We might also try and see if we can save it. Um, at the moment, it doesn't work. It's, uh, and I have a feeling I know what's happened. We'll have a look, when we, we'll be able to find out when we take a closer look here. But um, as you can see down here, um, the soldering attempts here are less than excellent and there's been a bit of scratching and scraping because I think he's realized he's made some mistakes on the other side even these the big areas here you now this is this is quite an easy soldering job but again it's just nah and he's had to scratch away here because apparently the solder bridged and if you watch my videos you'll know the reason solder bridges is because there's not enough flux you've used too much heat for too long the flux is bent out of the solder and the solder becomes long and stringy and spiky and instead of just balling up and making a nice shiny blob it tends to um, when you pull your iron away it pulls away a whisker and that whisker can go across or if you've got two bits like this they'll join together instead of being nice and separate that's not good and over here you can see you know this side of the board i mean even here we've got issues like the insulation is all melted here problem is he's probably used too much heat for too long but uh, it's the other side i want to look at because that's where i think the problems happen now the symptoms on this board are that the board works when you plug the USB connector in, lights light up and it talks to the computer, but it doesn't work from the main from the power. Once you remove the USB, the board goes dead. And I think what's happened there is that the, the power supply, because normally this is your, your, your LiPo voltage goes in here, and then it goes through a regulator to drive this chip and also provide a voltage output for your servo rails here if you're using servos. And what I think has happened is that down here, I'm going to try and get in really close with the macro lens, see if I can uh, spot what's gone on. Now this is really quite difficult from a filming perspective because everything's really close to the camera lens here and I'm trying to see through the LCD screen. But if we look here, you see these little whiskers? If I can get my, my knife in here to get a better angle, I can perhaps move some of them around. See the little wiry whiskers here that are uh, probably, you can see them in there, see under the knife blade there. There's, there's a whisker of wire. And there's another whisker of wire, you see that one there. So what has happened is um, he's pushed the wires through the board there and they've actually splayed out. Then he's tried to solder. And unfortunately, it's shorted out here across. This is the uh, negative, this is the positive. And I think what's happened is that one, one of these wiry whiskers has shorted the positive and negative rails. And that's meant that the regulator that's supposed to take our LiPo voltage down to the low voltage to run all the electronics has, or, and down to five volts for this rail here has popped. So it's put too much load on there. This regulator has stopped working, may have damaged it. I can't actually see quite often this little chip here. No, where is it? Yeah, one of these little chips will actually physically go bang if you overload them. They blow out, little chips blow out of them. I can't see it here. So what I'm going to do is actually, um, obviously I'm going to clear all this out, take out <laughs> all this stuff, and get rid of these whiskery wires, do it properly. Oh, hopefully I'll be able to show you how to do it properly as well. And then maybe it's just a temporary load on the power supply. Maybe if we get rid of the short, it will come back to life. I really hope so, but I'm not particularly confident. But let's down here, see, this solder shows too much heat for too long and all, all the flux is burnt out. And also the wires weren't tinned before they were put through. Obviously these wires, if they were tinned, they weren't tinned very well because instead of pushing through a single tinned wire where all the little strands are all held together by solder, obviously they're all separate and that's where things can go terribly wrong and you can get little shorts across the board like that. Um, so yeah, and over at this end, you can see the effect of the heat. He's used a lot of heat on the other side because the iron wasn't hot enough. So he's had that on for too long and it's created too much heat, which has caused the issue of the whole thing getting overheated and not being very good at all, if I can get back in here. So there, um, yeah, the rest of the board doesn't look too bad. I don't see any other major damage, no popped bits, but we're just gonna have to go through, clean this up, see if we can do it properly, make it work. Um, let's cross our fingers. Okay, I've done my very best to uh, clean this board up as much as I can. It hasn't come out too bad on the top here. 
Um, over on the other side, over here, try and get the, the shine, get the glare off that. It's a bit hard to get lighting going here because this is all a little bit how you go and try and get some better lighting. Um, yeah, uh, there's been a lot of overheating of these pads, but they're still stuck, so that's not so bad. However, upside down here, one of the pads has been damaged because it's been overheated um, when the original soldering was done. Fortunately, fortunately, there's no connection on this side of the board to that hole, so we can solder to the top side and hopefully we'll still have the connection going through via the other side. Um, now, so I've just sort of taken off the, the wires that were there, cleaned them up. I haven't bothered um, sucking out the solder from the holes because these are already pretty dubious in terms of the amount of heat they've had poured into them. Don't want to make them any more likely to be heat damaged. Now I'm just going to try and solder the wires back on and we'll see how we go. Okay, so what I'll do now is I will reattach the, the main power feed over here and then we'll see if we're getting over there on those two pads there and we'll see if we're getting any voltage appearing over here if the same thing lights up now that hopefully we've removed the short circuit sometimes it depends on the design but these these buck regulators sometimes if you short them they don't blow they just shut down depends on how they uh, are set up this may have blown it may have just shut down with the extra load time to find out okay the first step in any job like this is to Take away a bit of the insulation from the end of the wire. I, I like a nice sharp hobby knife here actually, because you can just, if on silicon wire, you can just peel that away and get a really good end like that. Give it a little bit of a twist, have a bit of an Oliver there, and do the same on the other one. Try and keep them even. There we go. Hopefully this isn't shot because I cannot see the viewfinder of the camera and that's it. Now the next thing is you've got to make sure you're using the right tip on your iron. This tip here, it's fine for uh, for circuit board work, but it's just not heavy enough to do these wires. It won't transfer the heat fast enough. So let me just pull out a bit so you can see what we're talking about here. Ooh, go all blurry on me, why don't you? Okay, get to the right level. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to change the tip to a one that has a larger area on the end, and that will um, transfer the heat more quickly, make the solder, make the joint warm up more quickly. Therefore, we're not going to get any damage occurring to things. So here we go, and always get yourself a good iron. This is a Hako iron, brilliant, not soft, flexible. Anyway, most of my other video. So what you can see here, let me pull in again, you see the difference in these tips. As you can see, this is the tip I've just fit. It's got quite a big flat area at the end there for transferring the heat as quickly as possible. This is the tip I took off, see how much smaller it is? So although we're dealing with exactly the same number of watts on our soldering iron, the same temperature, this will transfer the heat far more quickly, which means we don't have to take as long. And one of the secrets to good soldering is speed, because the longer you keep the heat on the iron, the longer you keep the, the solder hot, the quicker the flux boils out, and then you end up with horrible results. So I'll just put that away and we'll turn it on, warm it up. Okay, you're gonna need some decent solder as well. Always get the good solder, not that horrible tin stuff. Get the decent lead solder. Uh, you know, none of the hippie stuff, right? And so then you need to make sure that you've got these twisted so that all the strands, there's no strands poking out, that will ruin your day if you have a strand poking out. And then you need like seven hands, but uh, I'm old school at this, I've done this before. I don't need seven hands, I just need to keep an eye on the viewfinder. Um, a little bit of solder on the end of the iron to help conductivity, and then you need to heat the wire and feed the solder in at the same time. Yep, here we go. I should have my glasses on because I can't see what I'm doing. Then give it a bit of a twirl. There we go. So now this piece of wire, all the strands are held together by the solder that is wicked in there. So it's like a solid piece of wire. I just do the other one. But this time I'll put my glasses on so I can see what I'm doing because it'll make it much easier for all concerned. Once again, a bit of solder on the iron to get the heat flowing and then it should, oops, I took my meds today, so I'm not too bad, actually. It's not a bad day for the old Parkinson's, I've got to say. Doing pretty good. All right. And it would be easier if I could keep my head out of the shot. Damn it. Oh, here we go. I've done a really crap job at this because I'm more focused on filming than actually doing the right job. So, that yeah, that's not very good. I'll just put a bit more solder on because it needs it. Hopefully I'm still in shot. Here we go, that's a bit better. Right, and already you can see that we're getting whiskers. See the solder's whiskering because I have used up all the flux. Not too important just at the moment because I'm not putting it on a circuit board with that. So um, now we need to get our circuit board here. This is our board. 
and we must tin the pads that we're going to solder to. It's already got some, already got some solder on those pads, but I'm going to tin it again because we're going to get some fresh solder with fresh flux on it. And we want that all set to go, so I'll put a bit on there. And again, got to be pretty quick. There we go, that's about as quick as you want to be because those pads will get too hot and they will lift up if we're not careful. Now I just need to take set a shot to make sure I know which one is which. Okay, negative is on this side. And this is actually a little bit long, but it'll do. I'm going to put the positive one on first, I think. Let's just put the positive one on. And again, if you've got one of those mini hands things, oops, I'll move into shot a bit more because it's going to be weird. If you've got one of those mini hands things, it would probably be a great idea to use it, but I don't have one of those because I'm old school. Let's see, now you don't have to add any extra solder, you just have to sweat this down like so. That is sweated onto there. And the same goes for the one next to it. You've got all the solder you need there already. If you start adding more solder, that's when you start getting things running together and not working very well. So just add a bit of heat and it will flow. There we go. That's probably good enough. It's not very good. It's not my best work. It's not my best work, but it will do for the purposes of testing this, this board out. We don't need to do anything else. We need to actually put some power on here now. But unfortunately, this guy uses a, a Dean's connector. Yes. This is back to the 60s or 70s, but we'll find a Dean's source of power and we'll see if it works. Right, here's the moment of truth. Let's see if the little lights will light up and if it will go. Um, get my little battery here, try and keep this in shot while I fiddle around. Five, four, three, two, one. Woohoo, look at that. Can you see the lights going? I think we've fixed it. Yes. So what I've done here, obviously that short was holding down the power supply now. It seems to be working. I'm sure the owner of this will be super pleased. So what I'll do now is I'll put the other connectors back on and hopefully um, we've saved the day. So there you go. That's why soldering is important. If you get it wrong, you can. Unfortunately, I don't think we damaged this. We, it, it survived. Good design. It's simply the short circuit on the output of the regulator caused the regulator to shut down. So it didn't work. But when we took that short circuit off, we, we cleaned the board up. It all came back to life and hopefully it still works. I've got a terminate the there's a gps here and then there's this lead i don't know um, i should have made better notes of where these wires went but really seriously um, i'll talk to the owner and we will solder it up when he comes back make sure we get everything where it's supposed to go and hopefully be a happy man um, yeah so key things go and watch my video on how to solder it will save you from making a mistake like this but bottom line quick essentials a decent soldering iron um, don't use a crap soldering iron this whole thing is only as good as the weakest link and there are links this is the first part of your link a good soldering iron the hako is a fantastic investment but you can get things uh, temperature controlled cheapy irons that well, they'll do the job but uh, seriously um, no one ever regrets buying good quality tools and when it comes to soldering irons it's a bit hard to go past the hako it's just it's a it's a fantastic piece of kit um, the other thing is some solder, decent solder. This was sent to me by a viewer and I really appreciate it. It's fantastic that they sent me this because it was a bit hard to get hold of some decent solder in New Zealand. This is Kester solder and it is an alloy of lead and tin. Um, don't just use the tin solder. I've done a video on that. Only hippies use tin solder and look what it does to them. No fun at all. Um, and the other thing is it helps to have some nice tools, good side cutters. Someone sent me these too. Amazing. I'm just so impressed with how people watch the videos and they send me stuff that I find really, really useful. So if you're the guy that sent me this, you're a bonzer bloke. Um, and even something like a modeling knife for stripping insulation can be really, really useful. You can get a proper insulation stripper, but I'm old school. I was brought up using half the time just my fingernails or knives and you just get into the habit. And I don't use wire strippers at all, actually. They, they uh, you know, it's just another tool to lose on the bench. And of course, some flux. You don't need flux. It's not essential. It's not critical. You can, I've, for many, many years, I've soldered without flux. I have flux now because it helps on some occasions, but you don't, it's not an essential. But if you, if you can afford it, buy some and get some decent flux. Um, this is uh, a Kester product. Well, Kester make all the best stuff. This is a hash 2331-ZX. That's the best flux I've ever used that. So if you can get that, it's a bit hard to get hold of this one. There's a lot of rosin core fluxes and things which aren't really so good. This is just a brilliant, oh, it's good there's still plenty left. <laughs> when this goes, I don't know what I'll do. There you go. Thanks for watching. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up. It always helps with the engagement. And uh, to the comment section, if you'd like to comment, and perhaps a little bit of feedback would be quite nice. Now, if you have trouble with soldering, if you find that your soldering is just not as good as it could be, perhaps not as bad as this was, but if you do have trouble with soldering, tell me what it is that you find most difficult. And I'll try and perhaps do a video to um, come up with ways to improve how that works, you know, how you can perhaps get around those problems. So you tell me what you need to know, and hopefully I'll tell you 
what you need to know. That's it. Thanks for watching, guys. Got to get on. More videos to make. Bye for now.